Welcome back, Mindsetters. 2D trigonometry is so much fun. And as you guys are saying, many of you are like, oh, I'm really enjoying this section. Or oh, Mindset just makes the section so much easier and that you're starting to understand it. And the questions that you're asking also show that you're really understanding it. And of course, Mindset is here to make learning so much more fun. And especially mathematics. Mathematics just gets so much fun when you understand, just like everything else. So at this point, if you still want to ask questions, please do, guys. Please send in anything that you need. Remember that it is Monday, which means that there are some prizes to give away. So make sure that you are one of those mindsetters that wins today. Over to you, Natasha. Okay, guys. So we're going to now have a look at a question that we often get asked about, which is bearings. Okay. Um, now, remember, a bearing will always have a direction attached to it. And generally, if they just give you a bearing and they say, you know, and give you the degree, it's always measured from the north. Okay, so when you look at bearings, I know it sometimes can get confusing, especially if you have to, if you have to draw it. Uh, but it's generally measured from the north, and north is taken as your north degree, uh, north degrees, and we keep moving around from the north. Okay, north, I'm talking about the direction of the axis. Remember, your axes go... Um, your direction goes north, south, east, and west. All right, so generally when you look at bearings, they're always measured from the north, especially if they don't give you the specific direction. As you'll see in the question we are about to do, they give us the directions of the bearings. Okay, so let's have a look at the question. Okay, we are told that a game ranger G is 8,3 kilometers from the control center C at a bearing of 54 degrees east when he receives a call that there is an injured antelope A that needs attention. Okay, so let's have a look at this. All right, so we have our game ranger here, G. This is your call center C, and you can see whenever bearings are involved, we immediately introduce uh, a system of axes, okay, where we call north, south, east, west, and then we measure things from around those axes. They are told that 54 degrees east of north, uh, the, the, the length from G to A, from G to C, G being the ranger, C being the call center, is 8,3 kilometers. So when he is 8,3 kilometers away from this call center, he gets a call that there's an injured antelope. And the antelope is at position A. All right. Um, the antelope is located 4,8 kilometers at a bearing of 5 degrees south of east. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So here's our call center C. They say that it is located at a bearing of 5 degrees south of east. So we always start with the part that they mention south of east. We're going to start from the east and we're going to measure 5 degrees south of that. So we're starting with the second part. So it's 5 degrees south of east. Okay, and that's 5 degrees. And the distance from the call center to the antelope is 4,8 kilometers. Um, the diagram represents the situation and let's just see what we can fill in on this diagram. Okay, so let's just go over the diagram quickly again because I know it's, it's quite a complicated thing when it comes to bearings and a lot of you get very, very confused. So let's have a look. Our call center is at position C, right? We know that G is where the game ranger is. And we know that A is where the antelope is, right? They tell you the distance from the call center to the game ranger is 8,3 kilometers at a bearing of 54 degrees. Um, what was it again? 54 degrees. Yes, that's right. And we are then told that the call center is 4,8 kilometers away from the antelope at a bearing of five degrees uh, south of east. Okay, all right. Let's see, as always, before we look at the question, let's just see what we can fill in on the diagram. Now remember, this is your axis, so the normal things apply. Okay, your north 
to south is going your north to south direction is going to be perpendicular to the east to west. Okay, so therefore the angle here C is going to be equal to 90 degrees. We know that this bearing was given as 54 degrees, therefore I can work out this one, C1, using complementary angles. If that's 90, if the whole thing is 90 and that little portion is 54, 90 minus 54 will give me C1. All right. And let's have a look at what that is. 90 minus 54 is 36. So we can fill in C1 as 36 degrees. Okay, that's about all we can do right now. We know that C1 is 36, and that's really all that we can fill in. Okay, they, they ask you, the first question says, calculate how far the game ranger is from the injured antelope. So remember, the antelope's at point A, and the game ranger's at point G. So what are they asking you to find? The distance from G to A. Now, if you look at the diagram, what have you been given? You've got two sides and an included angle. We've got this side, GC, and we've got this side here, CA. And we know that the angle between the two we can find, because we know C1 is 36. We've got the little one here is 5, so therefore that whole thing is 41 degrees. So we've got the angle and two sides included angle two sides so therefore the rule you should be using is the cos rule okay so we're going to use the cos rule to help us find ga let's set out the cos rule so i can say that g a squared is equal to okay and we've got this side cg and ca so it's going to be equal to C G squared plus C A squared minus two C G times C A cos of the included angle, the angle being forty one degrees. All right, so that was thirty six plus five, yep, forty one. Okay, so we've got our angle, we've got our CG, CA, so therefore we can use the cos formula, plug everything into the formula, and work out what the value of GA is. Okay, so let's put in our values. We've got CA is 8,3, so it's going to be 8,3 squared, plus CA was 4,8, plus 4, 8 squared minus 2 times the product of those two and then cos of 41. All right, and all you're going to do now is just put that into your calculator and work out what GA squared is. Okay, and we're going to move this over so we can see the values. Okay, so it's going to be 8 comma 3 squared plus 4 comma 8 squared. And you really, you can put the whole thing into your calculator all at once, times 8 comma 3. And then we're going to times that by 4.8. And the angle is cos... Of 41. Okay, and that gives us an answer of 31,7947. It's 31,7947, and there were a whole lot of other decimals there. We're not going to round that off, guys, because remember, we're not looking for GA squared, we're looking for GA. So what we need to do, 
Because remember, we've got the value for g a squared. If I'm looking for g a, I need to take the square root of what was on our calculator. So we're going to say square root of that answer. And that gives us 5,64. Um, we didn't, I don't think they told us how to round off. Let's just have a look again. No, they didn't. So we're going to round off to two decimal places, and it's going to be 5,64 meters. Okay, so therefore the ranger is 5,64 meters away from the antelope. All right, let's go over it again quickly to just show you what we found. We've got the distance from G to A is 5,64. And we got that by using, it's actually in kilometers, not meters. And we got that by using the cos rule. All right. Let's just change that as well. That's kilometers. Now, the last question says, or the second question, calculate the area of triangle GCA. Now, remember, if you don't have the base and you don't have the height, what do we need to use? We need to use the area rule. So, the area of triangle GCA, the formula, it depends on what you've been given. Now, guys, if you look at the diagram that you've got here, the only sides we can really work with, because the only angle that we know is this one. So the only sides we can work with is the 8,3 and the 4,8. We don't have angle A, so therefore we can't even consider the side that we've just found. All right, so therefore the area of this triangle is going to be a half GC times CA and sine of your... Uh, included angle here, which is 41. All right, so it's going to be a half of 8,3 times 4,8 and then all times by sine of 41. Okay, and let's do that on the calculator. So it's 0 0.5 times 8.3 times 4,8 and then sine of 41. And that will give you an answer of 13,07. Okay, so again, rounding off um, to two decimal places, it's 13,07 kilometers squared, kilometers squared. Okay, all right, so that was just finding the area and then using the cos rule to find the length of the side. We also looked at a little bit of bearings in that question. So at this point, I'm quickly going to cross over to Katleho, see if she's got any questions. Sure, I actually do. Um, there's one question that says, I have a triangle that I'm trying to sol solve, but it seems like I have to use both rules. Is this possible? And this question is by Musa. Uh, if you have one triangle, it might have separate little pieces to it, and then you can definitely use two, law or two rules. There's no... There's, no, uh, there's nothing stopping you. you. I mean, you can use the sine and cos rule. It just depends on what you've been given. And... We really, if you have a specific question, you would need to post it and send it to us so that we can have a look at your question. But it is possible to use more than one rule in a triangle that's divided into separate pieces. So that is possible, yes. Okay, I'm just trying to find the other one. There was another one. Um, oh, yes, here it is by Levin. He asks, um, can you use the sine rule if you have a 90 degree angle? You can use the sine rule, but it depends on which sides you've been given and which angles. Because remember when we started the lesson, we said you can use the sine rule if you've got two sides and an angle. So it does depend on 
which sides are given and which angles are given. You need to have, um, you know, again, it depends on the question. So if you have two angles on a side, yes, you can do it because you can quite easily find the third angle using angles in a triangle. So if it's two angles and one side, easy to use the sine rule in a 90 degree triangle. And you can always use the sine rule if you've got that kind of case. All right, so hopefully that answered that question. Okay, would you like another one? If you have them, let's keep them rolling then. Um, sorry, I'm just looking. Um, okay, so there's one by Rifle Tier or Rifle who asks, if you were to measure the bearing, what numbers are used on the protractor for measuring upside, upside or down? I think he meant upside down. Uh, I um, but I'm not sure what he means, what numbers. I'm assuming he means there's two rows mm -hmm. uh, on, on your protractor. So you would use, it depends on where you're measuring from again. So if you've got your north, south, east, west, and you're just measuring 45 degrees, uh, for example, east of north, you're just going to use the inside row. So it really depends on where you're positioning your protractor. All right, and it's only... Um, if we see the question, we can tell, but usually if it's over 90 degrees and that kind of thing, you're going to look at the, 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 the top row rather than the inside row, okay, which I think is kind of what he was asking. All right. Uh, I think, can we get into our last question? Yes, we, we can. may just have time to finish one more. Yes. yes okay. All right, guys. So this one, I'm, I've written this one out. Well, I've written some of it out. And, you know, sometimes you get a question where there's no diagram given. It's all well and nice when there's a diagram given because, you know, you can fill things in and that. But sometimes the diagram's not given. So let's have a look at a question like that. Okay, from the top of a tower 95 meters high, the angle of elevation of a hill is 24,3 degrees. From the foot of the tower, the angle of elevation is 32,8. And I must apologize because I have used a lot of abbreviations here. But um, this little sign here means angle, and that means elevation. All right. So ELV is elevation, and that means angle. So, and the question says, calculate the height of the hill. All right. So if we have a look at what we've got, we've got some sort of tower. All right. And then you've got a hill. Okay. And then from the tower, you're standing at the top, and then you're going to look to the top of that hill, okay, I'm drawing's gone a bit skewed there, but you can look to the top of the hill and you're going to measure an angle of elevation. And then from the bottom of the tower, if you're standing here now, so that's your eyeball, you're looking up, okay, you're looking up again to the top of the hill, they give you another angle of ele elevation. So this kind of question, sometimes you can be given and you need to actually make the drawing yourself. So let's make a neater sketch than the one I've just put up there. All right, so we're going to call this our tower. Uh, let's call it T and F. T for top of the tower and F for the foot of the tower. All right, and then we're going to have our hill here, which is going to be higher than the tower. Okay, and that needs to be a straight line. So I am going to erase that and use our tools for straight lines. Okay, there we go. All right, so that is your hill, okay, and we've got the angle of elevation from T to the top, and then we've got from the foot to the top of the tower. And I'm going to join it all up nicely so that we have triangles that we can work with. All right, and then we can join that up there as well. Okay, and I'm going to show you how I got this, uh, this drawing from the information they've given us. Okay, they've said that you're looking from the top of a tower that's 95. So if this is our tower FT and that's 95 meters, from the top of the tower, so that's our position there. Okay, we're looking at the top of this hill. Let's name this hill H and um, P. Okay. So we're looking to the top of the hill, and we can see that the angle of elevation, or we measure that the angle of elevation from the top of the tower to the top of the hill is 
24,3 degrees. Okay, that's the information they give you. And then they say, if you go to the bottom of the tower now, to the foot, so imagine that you've now come all the way down, down the elevator, and you're at the bottom of this tower, and you're looking once again up from that point. Okay, so if you're looking up from that point to this top part here of the hill, or the topmost part of the hill, H, that angle they measured as 32,8 degrees. They ask you what the height of this hill is. Okay. Once you've got all of this uh, information in a diagram, it becomes easier to solve. But you've got to just use the information that they gave you and dissect it and really just break it down to help you draw the diagram. There's not really many more tips I can give you. It depends on the information you are given and you need to break it down piece by piece. Okay, so they're talking about a tower, so we made uh, a length for the tower. They're talking about a hill, we made a, a height for the hill as well. Okay, so it really just depends on the question they've given you. If they had given us angles of depression, our diagram would look different. So it really just depends on what they have given you. Okay. We know that the tower is 95 meters high and we're looking for the height of the hill. All right, guys, remember that a tower is always going to be perpendicular to the ground. Otherwise, it would be lopsided and fall over. So therefore, this angle F is 90 degrees. If that little angle of elevation looking up to the hill is 32,8, then using 90 degrees minus 32,8, I'll get that this is 57,2. Okay, so if I call that F1 and F2, then F1 is 57,2. All right. Um, what else can we fill in? We know that if we now look at triangle, because we've got quite a few triangles here, right? If we break it down, the triangle with the most information is triangle H, T, F. That's the one with the most information. It's got FT in it. It's got uh, one angle here. We know that this must be perpendicular here. So therefore, we've got quite a lot of information in that triangle FTH. Okay. We know that angle T, that's got to be perpendicular to that horizontal there. So therefore, that's 90. That's 24,3. So we've got that whole angle T. We've got that that's 57,2. Therefore, we can work out angle H using angles of a triangle. So how do we do it? It will be 180 minus 24,3 plus 90, which is that angle, minus, or plus, sorry, plus 57,2. So it's 180 minus the sum of the angles that we know. And we'll get that angle H is 8,5 degrees. Okay. We're looking for the height of the tower, which means we need to find HP. And guys, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit here. If you want to get, remember this is what I've told you always, work from the triangle with the most information and get a side that takes you into the triangle you want to be in. If we're looking for the height HP, this is the triangle we want to be in. The side that joins these two triangles is HF. Okay, so what you're going to do is working in triangle HTF, you can find HF by using the sine rule. And I'm not going to show you all the working. It's just going to be HF over sine 114,3. So it's HF over the opposite angle, sine of the opposite angle is equal to 95 over sine 8,5. Okay, so it's 95 over that angle, sine of that angle, and you will get, and that's just for you to do on your calculator, and you'll get that HF is 585,77. So it's 585,77. So that's the length HF. But remember the one we want is HP. So therefore now we're in a 90 degree triangle 
and we can use the Sokla Toa rules or um, we could use the sine rule if we wanted to. And if you work out the value of HF using Soka Toa, I'm going to say sine of this angle that we've got. So sine of, let's just get that back, sine of 32,8 is going to be equal to HM over hf so therefore h sorry hp see hp remember is the height of the tower so from here that's my opposite and i've got the hypotenuse so opposite over hypotenuse will give me uh, a ratio that i can use to solve for hp so therefore just do all of that on your calculator and you'll get 317 three meters. All right, so that is the height of your tower HP. So guys, we really ran out of time there at the end, so we had to push, push, and rush through it, but I hope you understood all of that. And uh, we've done two lessons of 2D tricks, so I think you guys are ready to tackle that section on your own. Thank you, Natasha. So guys, time always goes fast. I don't even need to mention this anymore. Thank you so much for such an awesome show. You guys were absolutely fantastic. Trigonometry is so good to you guys because you are good to trigonometry. Here at Mindset, we thank you so much for an awesome show. And thank you again to Liberty for bringing us this awesome show. Grade 12s are next, so you can stay or you can call all your grade 12s to come join the show. Bye-bye, guys.